Ever since the dawn of time, also known as the 80s, people have wondered what lies beyond our rubbish little rock. People have asked many questions. Where are they? What will they look like? Will we be able to communicate with them? This video serves the purpose of loosely answering these questions while answering questions you didn't even know you wanted answering. In order to answer the various who, what, where, how and whys about alien life, we actually have to define what an alien is. Old men with white beards have asked this philosophical question for many years before me, and helpfully, they all came up with different answers, all more complicated than the last. Scientifically speaking, the question of what life is, is also diverse, including things like cells, but for simplicity's sake, and to make the video less mind-numbingly boring, I'll use two easy requirements to make sure something is actually alive. Number one, it has a metabolism. This is just a fancy word for the chemical processes that keep living things alive. The second requirement is that the thing must be able to move in some way. All things that are alive in some way move, even things that stereotypically don't move, such as barnacles or those weird living rock things that people love to share on Reddit. They all still move in some way. Whether it be opening a mouth or throwing various bodily fluids into the water, all living things move in some way or another. Now that that's out the way, I can dive into the interesting bits. The most pressing question regarding alien life, apart from when are they going to make another good fucking alien movie, is where is it? Shouldn't we have found it by now? When answering this question, people often talk about microbial life, and then people become really uninterested very quickly. While the chance of finding alien microbes is much higher than multicellular life, it's still very possible that we could find complex alien life within this very solar system. Let's take a zoom around the solar system talking about all the places that could potentially harbour life. Let's start with the obvious one, Mars. Unfortunately, Mars probably doesn't have weird aliens running about for Tom Cruise to avoid. However, it may well have boring microbial life. Mars may have had liquid water oceans a long time ago similar to ours, but they're not there anymore, so it isn't really important. What is important is the fact that there could be flowing water beneath the surface, which could contain microbial life. Along with water, another important factor to life as we know it is biological carbons, which the 2012 ALH 84001 Martian meteorite contained examples of. This shows that Mars may have supported life at some point. An outlandish theory suggests that Martian microbes could have been blasted into Earth's oceans at one point, leading to life on this planet, but living things tend to have a hard time in space, so that theory is a bit meh. Next on the list is the famous Europa. This moon is a really promising prospect due to the fact that under its ice crust, a saltwater ocean spans the entire moon. This ocean could be warmed by gravitational tidal forces and hydrothermal vents. Multicellular life could be supported by a hydrothermal ecosystem, and then all we have to do is send some submarines and we could have a real-life barotrauma match. The next moon is one that not many people know about. Saturn's moon, Enceladus. This little moon ticks all the boxes despite only being this large compared to the UK. We know it has an ocean, and samples taken from its geysers in 2015 confirm it has organic carbons within this ocean. This is all that is needed for life similar to that on Earth to exist. This little moon could be the best shot at life within our solar system. Last is the disgraced planet Pluto. This non-planet could have a liquid ocean, and heat from its tide or radioactive decay could provide the necessary conditions for life. But I wouldn't hold your breath about it, because, you know, Pluto is just one big disappointment after the other. Now that we know where life could be, what will it look like? This is the bit that could potentially be disappointing. The concept of convergent evolution is vital when thinking about xenobiology. Convergent evolution is when two organisms from different ancestral origins develop similar features to overcome the same evolutionary problem. An example of this on Earth is a butterfly and a bat. One is an insect and the other is a mammal. Their earliest common ancestor is millions of years ago, yet they both develop wings to exploit similar niches within the ecosystem. This concept carries over to other planets, as natural selection affects all living things. Most of the examples I have given involve water in some way or another, so any multicellular large life form would develop the same adaptations to large aquatic organisms on Earth. These include being streamlined and developing fins for propulsion, as well as being absolutely terrifying. The harsh truth is that life we find on Earth is fine-tuned for the niche in the environment it fills. If that niche happens to exist on another planet, it won't change the outcome that nature provides. All of the points I've gone over have been about life as we know it, using examples that we have seen. But what about life that we don't know? 
When it comes to extreme environments, Earth is no stranger. We have some badass extremophiles on Earth, and I don't mean those pussy ass water bears, I'm talking about the true extremophiles. We have archaea and bacteria that can survive in temperatures exceeding 120 degrees centigrade, and living in pH ranges from anywhere from 0 to 12, and living well below freezing temperatures. If life can survive in these conditions on Earth, then it must be able to do so on another planet. As Jeff Goldblum put it, life finds a way. However, what about environments we don't have on Earth? The keen-eyed among you may have noticed that I missed out Titan from my list of planets. Titan has oceans of not water, but methane and ethanes, at temperatures of negative 179 degrees Celsius. However, from 2013 to 18, researchers discovered many of the vital organic carbons that are needed for life on Titan. And in 2015, researchers in the Cornell University modelled methane-based organisms that use all the compounds available on Titan, or as Isaac Asimov put it, life as we don't know it could be right under our noses. Extraterrestrial life has always fascinated humanity. If it didn't, then there wouldn't be so many shit sci-fi Netflix originals. I mean, seriously, what is Netflix doing? The main problem with finding it is that it costs a lot more money than making a movie, and politicians have more important things to do, like running countries into the ground and bringing on the next apocalypse. However, one day, we might get to the point where we find a fish thing swimming around in Europa's oceans, or methane beasts roaming around on Titan, and when we do, Maybe it will spark a new age of discovery. However, we are some years off of that. In the meantime, you can go and watch some of my other videos that cover anything from ancient Aztec civilizations to why pandas are great. And while you're at it, go and follow my Twitter and subscribe for more of whatever my content is.